Hey Han, I'm Chloe and this is the Ankle Grab Invert or Inverted Crucifix tutorial. My mission here is to share my passion for pole dancing and make pole dancing easy to learn and accessible. This is the first video of the Intermediate Pole Trick Tutorial Series. In order to maximize your training out of all the videos, I highly recommend you to start from the very first video of this playlist, which is this one, as the tricks will be a progression of the video before. The ankle grab invert or inverted crucifix is a super, super exciting trick to learn. This is gonna be a first time to learn how to go upside down on this channel. We'll be going through two different arm variations and multiple variations of our exits. This video is a mirror for your ease of learning. I'll have a red wristband on my right wrist and my right ankle to indicate the right side of my body if you do get confused of the directions. This trick tutorial is created for you for information and educational purposes only and for you to enjoy learning pole dancing from the comfort of your own home. Please participate at your own risk and don't work beyond your capability and seek help or spotting when necessary. For any health concerns, please make sure you seek professional medical advice. Please make sure you warm up your body before you start this video as well. I have a warm up playlist depending on your level under each playlist. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these kinds of videos. And if you haven't yet, then please make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you are notified every single time I upload a video. If you're looking to further your pole journey in combining tricks and dance together, then consider subscribing to my online learning platform, Pole Art Vault, where we put tricks into a combo and learning an entire routine with combos and dance together. You can find the link in the description below for further information. All right, without further ado, let's get into the ankle grab. <laughs> Alrighty, now let's get into our conditioning. We've got six conditioning exercises to do today. Now, just to preface this, I don't expect you to do all six conditioning all at once. This could be rotated on a regular basis if you do train ankle grabs or inverts occasionally or on a regular basis. So if you wanna pick maybe one or two of the conditioning each time before you practice, that's gonna be perfect. You don't wanna to be too tired before you do that actual move, nor do you wanna to be too sweaty that you can't grip onto the pole. So just pick one or two, or if you're feeling a little bit strong, three of the exercises and you're good to go. Now let's start off with our first one. We are going to do our climb into the stand. Now we've done our climb in the beginning pole trick tutorial series. So if you haven't met this prerequisite yet, make sure that you check the climbing video before you try this one. So you can either come into your half rocky grip or your forearm grip. I'm going to do it my forearm grip. Inside leg comes nice and high and then get the knee crease onto your pole, bridge of your foot. Outside leg in front, hands come slightly higher. You're going to pull yourself up. Make sure you slide your hand down to chest height. You're going to draw your shoulders back and pull your elbows down to the floor. Pull the pole out of the ceiling. You're going to sit all the way back down. Then you're going to pull yourself back up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and then ankle to bend. And then coming out. Well done. Now, for this conditioning exercise, just ensure that you're really squeezing your lats. So just this part of your body, think about bringing your elbows back and then pull the pole down as much as you can so that you're really engaging through your shoulders and then all the way to your lats because you're gonna need that for the ankle grab. Let's try this on the other side just to balance it out. So I'm gonna come into my forearm, inside and up, outside forearm onto the pole, inside leg comes behind the pole, outside leg in front. I'm gonna pull myself up, Squeeze the shoulder blades together, pull the pole down, and then sit back down. I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades together, pull the elbows down, and then ankle to bun, and then sliding down. Well done. Now, if you can do two or three, and again, if you need to come down each time, that's totally fine. 
take your time through these conditioning exercises. So there's your climb to stand. Now let's move on into our knee tucks. So for a second conditioning, you're going to come into your body grip. Uh, what was this name called again? How did I forget this? Armpit grip, stronghold grip. <laughs> I had a mind blank for a second. You're coming into your stronghold grip. Then you're coming onto your tippy toes. Inside right comes in front of the pole so that you can get your inside butt cheek onto the pole. Inside hand up, neck height. Outside hand up, cheek height. Think about pulling the pole out of the ceiling and remember, try not to hunch too much here. You wanna think about drawing your shoulders back and then pull the pole down. You're gonna tuck your knee towards your chest and then coming down. If you can do multiple of these without your legs coming down, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we're gonna try four on each side. So one, two, and then make sure you're tucking your knee all the way to your chest. Three, and four. Well done. Let's try it on the upside. This should really target your core and those biceps and your arms and shoulders, everything. So inside butt cheek onto the pole, inside armpit comes onto the pole, inside hand at neck height, outside hand at cheek height. Make sure that you're not over wrapping your wrist, try to keep your wrist nice and neutral. Pull the pole out of the ceiling and we're gonna go into a knee tucks. Four, three, two, and last one. Perfect, well done. Now there's your second set of conditioning exercises. We did our knee tuck. Third one, we're going to get into our hitch kicks. So hitch kicks is very similar to what we did in terms of the knee tucks, where we come into a stronghold grip. And then this time, instead of lifting both of your knees up, you're lifting your inside knee up first. Now, once you lift your inside knee up, you're going to keep your inside leg forward, so straighten your leg. Then once you straighten your leg, you're going to swap and then come back down. So it's almost like a, I mean, I've never done karate before, but I usually call it like a karate kick. Um, you're kicking your inside leg forward, then your outside leg leads. So, inside leg up, then outside, then down. It, it takes a little bit of coordination to do this. So remember to just keep practicing these. The more you practice, your coordination will get better and it will make more sense as well. So inside leg up, shook, shook, and then coming down. Now, if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous and if you feel like you can kick your leg nice and high, then from there, we're gonna start leaning our head slightly backwards. And again, if you feel like you're still struggling to lift your leg up, totally fine, keep working on them. Otherwise, we're gonna start lifting our hips slightly higher. So right now, our hips are neutral, and then we're trying to lift up. So we're gonna start practicing going upside down. So I'm just gonna show this to you from the side so that you can see what's going on. Once I come into my strong head grip, I'm bringing my inside leg up. Remember, inside leg up first. Then from there, I'm gonna lean back and then come back down. So your aim is to try to get your toe as high to the ceiling as possible in a vertical line. Now try this four on each side if you can, and then let's just try moving on to the other side so that we can just balance it out. Inside hand comes onto the bottom, outside hand on top, inside leg comes up, and then we're gonna go kick, kick. Good, lift your inside leg up, kick, kick. Good, I'm just gonna go a little bit higher this time. So I'm gonna go inside leg up, up, lean back. Last one. Perfect, well done. Now remember when you're doing any sort of conditioning exercise, and this doesn't apply to every conditioning, but at least in this sense, that try to control your movement as much as you can. Try not to sort of like jump into the move where sometimes I see people wanting to really go up. So they're like, okay, I'm gonna slightly 
kind of grab behind the paw so that I can kick into it. Try not to do that because yes, it might be easy for you to get into the move at the time, but ultimately you won't be able to build the strength that you need to control it up as well. Now, the second reason why I say that is because if you do that, then you do risk the injury as well. Just because when you're jumping into things, you might pull something out of your socket or you know things happen. So just make sure you're training safely and control everything as much as you can. Well done, so there is your hitch kicks. Now let's move on into our fourth, fourth one, fourth conditioning. I'm almost losing count of all the conditioning to go through. Now our fourth one is gonna target your core so that you can lift your hips up. We're going to try a straight leg leg lift. So we're going to come onto the floor, sitting on your butt. Now, once you sit on your butt, you're going to lean all the way back onto your butt. Now, once you lean, you're lifting both of your legs up in a vertical line. Make sure you squeeze your knees and point your toes. Now, from here, try not to use your arms as much as you can. If you need to, obviously, work with your hands and use your hands to assist. We're going to lift our butt off the floor in a vertical line. Now, the perfect scenario here is just aligning yourself next to the pole and then lifting your hips up so that your body goes vertical. Now, a common mistake here is lifting your legs up towards your face. Make sure that you're not trying to lift your legs towards your face, but you're trying to lift away from your face. I'm going towards me as I bring my legs and then I'm going away. The more you kick your leg away, that's gonna really target your lower ab, which is gonna be very beneficial for your ankle grabs. So let's do six of these. And one, two, three, four, Thank you, sir. five, and six. Well done. Yeah. Now that is your full conditioning, we've done our leg lifts. All right, now let's move on into our fifth conditioning exercise, which is our ankle grab from lying on the floor. This is gonna be our first step into learning where our legs sit in the ankle grab and also really working through your core and your arm so that you can pull yourself up in your ankle grab. This is essentially your easiest regression into doing an ankle grab, but from the floor. So let's just try this together. I'm gonna do my left side first. So I'm getting my inside shelf or your side here, close to the pole. Now, I'm gonna grab my inside hand on the bottom and outside hand on top. So in this instance, my right shelf is on the pole, right hand underneath, left hand on top. Now from there, I'm going to start lifting my hip up and ensuring that my shelf is pressing into the pole. So if you don't have shelf grip right now, this is probably your time. Make sure that you expose the shelf, apply any grip aid that you need. Um, and make sure that you're really pressing the shelf into the pole. That's another grip point that you can use. Now from here, once I press my hips up, my outside leg comes on top. So it's crossing in front of the pole. Then from there, I'm gonna in, get my inside leg behind the pole and squeeze the pole as if I'm doing a upside down climb. Now, when you're in this position, if your hips are too low, then it's gonna be really hard for you to pull through your arms. So make sure that you slide your leg up as much as you can. So if you need to, just scoot your leg, scoot your leg, and scoot your other leg behind, and ensure that your hands are right in front of your cookie here. Now, once you're there, you're going to pull the pole out of the ceiling, lift your head towards your knee as much as you can. Woo, so we're doing a crunch. Let's do three on each side. Two. Squeeze through your legs. And last one. And then inside leg down, then outside leg down. Well done. 
Let's try this on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna get my left shelf onto the pole this time. I'm just gonna do it at a slight angle so that you can see what my legs are doing. So my inside hand comes onto the pole, outside and on top, make sure you're extending your arms. If you need to micro bend, that's totally fine as well. Whatever works for you to pull a little bit more. Now I'm gonna start lifting my hip up as much as you can. You can see that my back is lifted. My upper back is lifted here. I'm only just pressing into my head. Outside leg comes on top, inside leg behind. My shoulder is slightly resting, my inside shoulder is resting, but the rest of my body is lifted here. Make sure you're pulling the pole out of the ceiling, lift your head to your knee. Three, and two, last one. Inside leg down, slide your outside leg down on the pole, and then coming down. Well done. Whew. That was a workout of its own. There's your ankle guard from the back or lying position. So if you feel like you, keep, you need to keep practicing these, remember keep practicing these as many times as you need to. It takes weeks and weeks sometimes to get your ankle grab. So don't feel like you have to get it straight away. It is a journey. Now we're gonna go through our last conditioning exercise for today. Conditioning six, which is our ankle grab from a low position. So with our regular ankle grab, you are standing from a standing position, but for this one, we're gonna go from a squat. So we're going to come into a little squat, so bending through your knees and getting your shelf onto the pole. We wanna really familiarize ourselves with the shelf grip because this is gonna be quite crucial when you get into your ankle grab. Now, the lower you start, the less scary it is, I guess, because you're not doing it from super high and you know for a fact that you're low enough that if you do sort of wanna fall out of it or like slide out of it, that you're low enough that you're not gonna fall onto the floor. If you do need extra sort of padding around, remember you can always get blankets, um, I know some people use like mattresses. Um, you can get like a really cheap mattress from maybe like a local store and you can pad your pole as well, around the pole, I should say. Um, otherwise, you can obviously get a crash mat as well. Crash mat options are a little bit more expensive, but they are quite safe and they're obviously the best option if you can afford to get a crash mat. So let's try this again from a squatted position. So I'm almost in a reverse plank. I'm twisting my hips, so make sure my knee to my hip to my torso is in one line. So I'm here, I'm really pulling the pole out of the ceiling as much as I can. Think about bringing your elbows in. I'm lifting my outside leg up and then inside leg behind, sliding both of your legs up. Make sure that your shelf is on the pole here. And then from there, I'm going to tuck my chin in. Then I'm going to slide down to the floor. Perfect. Well done. So this is your first little taste of how to do an ankle grab. So let's try this on the other side just to balance that out. So I'm going to come into a, almost like this reverse plank position, making sure that my hip, my torso is in one line. Make sure you're really engaging through your core. Try not to arch too much. Keeping your back neutral and flat. Pull the pole out of the ceiling. I'm gonna lift my right leg or my outside leg onto the pole, inside leg behind. Make sure you keep your shelf onto the pole, looking down to the floor if you can. Tuck your chin in, slide your hands and legs down the pole and gently and slowly coming out. Beautiful. All right, well done. Super, super proud of you if you've gone through all the conditioning. And remember, as I reiterate, that you do not have to do all the conditioning all at once. Just pick and choose two or three of them and you're good to go. All right, I think we're ready for our trick now. Let's dive into our trick. Now let's get into the main attraction of today, which is our ankle grab or invert 
or inverted crucifix. Now I do have the pole on static right now, but you can do this both on spin and static. And we'll go through multiple different exits and also two hand grips as well. So this is an invert. First hand variation. Second variation. All right. Now I just gave you a sneak peek of one of the trickier exits. Um, but we will go through um, multiple different exits. So let's go through our ankle grab or the invert. So essentially your ankle grab or your invert, think of it as if it's a climb, but upside down. So we're starting off in our stronghold grip on our toes, inside glute or your butt on the pole, inside hand at neck height, outside hand at cheek height. Now same there, think about pulling your elbows in and then pull it down to the floor. You're trying to pull the pole out of the ceiling. You're going to look up towards the top of the ceiling or the pen. And then from there, you're going to kick your outside leg in front of the pole. So the closer part towards you. Now your inside leg goes behind the pole. So if you are looking towards the pole or the ceiling, then the part that's closer to you, that's where you want your outside ankle. So remember, always identify which one's your inside and outside before you get into the move because you're not gonna know which one's your inside and outside unless you identify it before. So I always think, okay, well, my left leg is my outside leg right now. So I'm gonna get my left leg in front of the pole and then my right leg behind the pole. So you're squeezing into the climb position. Now make sure that once you get your ankles onto the pole, you slide your legs up, press your hips up nice and high. Then we're pressing a chest forward, looking down to the floor. Ensure that your shelf is on the pole. Now, once you finish that, you're going to tuck your chin in, release the grip between your legs and your hands then gently sliding down and we're gonna do what's called an emergency exit in the beginning. That's your easiest way to get out and in case you just need to slide down or if your hands are getting slippery or you just need to come out of it. So let's try this really slowly. I'm going to show you from a back side so they can see. I'm getting my inside arm onto the pole as high and at cheek height. I'm stepping with my inside leg, swinging my outside leg up, so my left leg up, sliding my legs up, slide it up as much as you can. Then I'm ensuring that my shelf is on the pole. I'm gonna turn this way, my shelf. I'm gonna lift up slightly, push my chest forward, and looking down to the floor. From there, I'm gonna tuck my chin in, release the grip with my hands and my legs. Slowly tuck, tuck, tuck. Then once you come onto the floor, legs come off, then hand. Well done. So, when you're doing your ankle grab, the most crucial part of this one is once you finish and then once you're upside down, that your shelf is on the pole and you're looking down to the floor. That's probably the trickiest part once you get into it because initially you might find that the pole is sitting in your rib cage um, or a little bit lower. It could depend on where your hips are located. Ensure to get your shelf onto the pole and that's gonna be very helpful for the tricks that are about to come. For your ankle grab, yes, all you need to do is get your legs up and then you are upside down. However, when you start inverting and coming into straddle invert, chopper, outside leg hangs, the tutorial's about to come, you're really gonna need that shelf grip. 
So make sure that you get good habits now and really build that rock solid foundation so that the tricks are about to come and they're gonna be much, much easier for you. So let's just try this on the other side as well. So I'm just gonna face the other side so that you can see. Well, this time I might do the side profile just so you can see. So I'm gonna get into my left armpit, left hand at neck height, outside hand at cheek height. I'm making sure that my hip is in front of the pole. I'm stepping with my inside leg, lifting my outside leg up. Inside leg goes behind the pole. I'm gonna make sure that right now my pole is sitting in my, my rib. So I'm gonna lift myself up away from the pole and looking down to the floor. Now this time we're gonna try a different exit. So from here, if I feel secure, I'm gonna take my inside end off press the inside armpit onto the pole and I'm slowly going to take my outside into the side. From there, I'm going to grab the pole back, sliding my legs down and both of my legs down to the floor. Well done! So remember again that these are going to take a little bit of time so keep practicing in your own time as well. I remember I did my ankle grab over and over again for days. So remember that this trick, you're not gonna maybe get it straight away and that's totally fine. Remember that ankle grab is quite a big hurdle and it's a big, big move to go through. So let's make sure that we really work on this together nicely. Now for the next one, we're going to once we, uh, once we grab into our ankle gram, I'm just going to do it on back onto the first side so that we can go through the different exits. So, for the third exit we're going, rather than sliding down, I'm going to take my hands off, turn my body to the pole, then slide down from there. So, I'm going to come onto this side, into your ankle grab, sliding the legs up. From there, I'm going to take my inside and up, press that inside armpit onto the pole, slide your outside hand down, then take your hands off if you can. From there, I'm going to turn my body so outside hand comes into a cup grip, thumb facing down. I'm turning my body towards the pole, threading my arm through. And if you're feeling secure, you can take your hands off. Otherwise, keep your hands in front of your tummy. Now from there, I'm going to slide my hands down to the floor, release the tension between your legs, then slide my hands forward. Now from there, keep that back ankle on the pole, so whichever leg that you feel the bridge of your foot on the pole, keep it there, slide your other leg down to the floor, and I'm going to go into my mermaid exit. Perfect! Well done. So there is your full ankle grab, no hands in a mermaid exit. Now let's try the plank exit into the Superman for the next one. So for this exit, you're gonna do the same exact thing. I'm just gonna show you one variation where I keep my hand on, thread my arm through onto the other side, hands come off then slide both of your ankles down. So, um, onto the other side. So I'm gonna get my right leg onto the pole, left leg behind. I'm gonna take my hands off. From there, I'm gonna turn towards the pole, take the hands off if you can, hands coming down. I'm gonna walk my hands a little further away, then keeping your ankles, both ankles off, cross your ankles together. You're gonna slide your hips down and make sure your hip and leg is both in one line as you slide it all the way down until your whole entire torso is horizontal. Twist your hip to the side so that you get all the grip, grab the pole, and you're in your Superman. So come out, hands back down, Toes down on the floor, then your hips down. Yay! Well done. All right. So the key there in your Superman, make sure that if you feel like you're just sliding straight away, 
It might be because you're not twisting your hip away. So make sure that you're twisting your hip all the way so that you get all the grip in your thighs. Now the last one is our forearm stand and handstand exit, which is optional. And only for those that feel a little bit secure through your hands. So let's try this on. I'm going to get into my white armpit. You can do either or. I'm coming into my ankle grab, hands come off. I'm going to thread my arm through, turning your chest towards the pole. From there, I'm going to slide onto my hands and you can from there, handstand exit. So roll your leg over to the other side, or if you need to, you can come into your forearms. So elbow shoulder width apart, pressing your hands down onto the floor. Then you can get your leg down over to the floor. So again, only do these exits if you feel like you're feeling quite secure in your forearm or handstand. We will go through forearm stands and handstands a little further down in the trick tutorial series. So I just wanted to give this as an option for those that maybe have experience in doing forearm stands, handstands, and just as an option in the future if you want to practice them. But well done. There is all your two grips with your arms. So inside on the pole, no hands. We also did, I think we did six different exits. Well done. Now let's go through our tips and common mistakes. Now first common mistake is grip on your legs and your arms. Now let's just go through the grip points here. So your first grip point is obviously your ankles. Your second grip point is your shin and your calf because you are squeezing with your, your front shin and your back, uh, sorry, front calf and back shin. You're also squeezing through your knees. So remember when you're doing any sort of climbs that you want the knees, the side of your knees here onto the pole. So making sure that the grip is there and also through your thighs as well, a little bit through your thighs. Now let's go through the grip points of your upper body. So your upper body grip is your shelf, so your side, and also through your inside back of your arm if you've got your back of your arm on the pole. Tummy grip, if you've got your tummy on the pole when your hands are off. And obviously lastly, your hands when you're in your full ankle grab with both of your hands on the pole. So, when you're doing anything where it requires grip, you obviously want to make sure that, well, firstly, your skin either is exposed or maybe you might have sticky leggings like I do or like st sticky bodysuit. Um, that obviously works as well. So make sure that you invest in the right um, material fabric. Um, I do have these super fly honey leggings that are super, super beneficial for anything to do with climbing, especially when I have really, really dry skin. Um, and obviously if you have really sweaty skin with your hands, you can get um, sticky gloves, which are gonna be very similar to these sticky leggings where it helps you grip onto the pole. Now, the second option, if you do, don't wanna invest in leggings or uh, gloves and you really wanna work on improving your grip strength, maybe you're thinking about competing, etc., then make sure that you grab some grip aid because that's gonna be very, very beneficial, especially for those that have either sweaty or dry skin. So if you have dry skin, make sure that you get something tacky. Um, if you do have uh, sweaty skin, then you wanna make sure that you've got um, something drying for your hands or your body. So I usually use shaving foam or I use grip tonight, grip tonight or dry hands. So make sure that you invest in the right grip that suits you. And this is really up to you and also what you prefer. Um, now, speaking of leg grip, this is a very common mistake when you're doing any sort of like ankle grab, is that you're grabbing only using your thighs. So when I mean by just using the thighs is that the pole is essentially just sitting in your thighs, 
but not squeezing through your knees. This is a really common one that I come across. So make sure that when you are in your ankle grab, check and look at your legs to make sure that you're squeezing through the side of your knee here. The knee crease is on the pole. And when I mean knee crease, it's literally not towards your knee, but right where your knee crease is. So make sure that you get your knee crease onto the pole. Now, the third one I wanna go through is your hand positioning in your ankle grab. So initially when you're going into your ankle grab and if you feel like you were struggling getting that ankle grab, you might have had your hand quite high and you might have felt like you can do the ankle grab a little bit easier. This is another common one where if you're grabbing the pole high, it's obviously easier for you to pull. But what happens is that when your hands are too high, you essentially have to kick your legs up higher, which is gonna be a bit of a struggle when you do ankle grabs. So make sure that your hands are nice and low initially to start off with, so that one, you can work on the conditioning of your lats because you need a lot of lats when you're doing um, anything to do with inverts, leg hangs, all that stuff. So make sure that your hands are in the correct positioning, not too high. Um, and if you do end up pulling your hands a bit higher, then ensuring that you, you can press your hips even higher for those that are feeling very strong. Now, speaking of your hands, hand positioning, once you get your hands in position and you're kicking your legs up, if you still struggle to press your hips high, what you can do initially and only when you're practicing is sliding your hands down when you're in your ankle grab. So what I mean is I was starting the right positioning with my hands, I'm kicking my legs up. I'm like, oh, I can't press my hips any higher than that. Then slide your hands down instead of your hips. Slide your hands down and you can see that now I am in a lower ankle grab, but I am actually able to come into that ankle grab. So this is again beneficial for initially when you're learning, but try not to make this a habit because you're not going to end up practicing a lot of sort of like pull and engagement through your arms. All you're doing is just releasing the tension between your hands, sliding your hands down. So it's not a most ideal thing, but it is a good practice if you do want to start practicing your ankle grabs initially. Now, once you're like, okay, um, I feel like I can press my hips up, then remember that when you're pressing your hips up, you're not just pressing your hips up, you're actually engaging through your arms as well. So this is a very common one. Another one is when you start training things where it requires to do multiple different things at the same time, you forget about one part and you just remember the other part, which is pressing your hips up. So what I mean is when you're pressing your hips up, you forget that your arms are there. So you forget to completely engage. So remember that once you press your hips up, I'm pressing my hips, but I'm also pulling through my arms at the same time. So legs up, hands down at the same time. So remember that you want to both work both um, your levers um, simultaneously so that you can really get through the ankle grab. Now, next point is, again, to reiterate the shelf grip. And this is very, very crucial when it comes to when you start, you want to start working on chopper or straddle inverts and also your outside leg hangs, Gemini's, inside leg hangs, Scorpio's, all that stuff. So, um, I'll just show you the reason why um, you want to make sure that you get your shelf onto the pole is because that's another grip point that you can use. I see a lot of people when, when they do the inverts, you're your shelf is not on the pole like this. So you're not, you're almost just under utilizing another grip point. The other thing is if you're not getting your shelf onto the pole, you're gonna end up sort of hunching your back like this. And this is another reason why your hips start to drop down when you're in your ankle grab. So ensuring to keep your hips up, use your shelf. You grab the pole, slide your legs up, Make sure that when you're pulling the pole, that you pull your body away from the pole and get your shelf onto the pole. If you're gonna pull yourself into the pole, then you're gonna end up pulling your, your rib into the pole. 
So you're trying to pull the pot away and then onto the shelf. So remember what I mean by away, not this way, pulling yourself towards your inside hand, but you're trying to pull your body towards your outside hand. Now remember that when you're doing any sort of pull exercise, it's obviously going to be not the easiest thing in the beginning. So keep practicing your ankle grabs. Now let's just go through the next one, which is when you are coming into your shelf that you're looking down to the floor. This is another part where you forget to kind of look down to the floor because you're just really focused on looking towards your hands or looking up into the ceiling, looking at your legs and just ensuring that your legs are still just hanging on to your life, essentially. Um, the other thing, what I guess it's a little bit scary if you're looking down to the floor is that you can see how far you are from the floor. So it, it gives you a little bit of like that scare for a second. Um, just remember that if you don't look down to the floor, that your hips are gonna drop and you're going to end up sort of like sliding down onto the floor and you can't hold that ankle grab. So I'll show you the difference. This is me looking up. You can see that if, if I look up, then my back is sort of rounded and then my uh, chin is tucked so my, my hips are starting to drop. If I slide my legs up, press my chest forward, look down to the floor and pull the pole out, it's much easier to get that shelf grip and also it's going to help you keep your back flat so that your, your body is not hunched like this. And you can probably see the difference here. Now the last tip is working through not just your arm, but also your core. Sometimes we forget that when we're doing our ankle grabs that it's not just through your arm, but it also requires your lower ab. And remember all the conditioning exercises we've done before, we wanna really work on core and engaging through it. So once you come into your ankle grab, you're thinking about sliding your legs up and using really your core to engage your core, and then you're pressing your chest and really working through your arms and your core at the same time. And obviously through your legs as well. The more you can utilize your core and think about pulling the pole out of the ceiling, you can really work through every part of your body and not just rely on your arms, maybe not just rely on your legs. You can rely on all parts of the body and it's all about that balance. And if you try to use one part, obviously it's gonna be harder. The more you can collect your whole entire body into it, the easier it gets. The the more you collect your whole entire body into the ankle grab, the easier it gets. So make sure you keep practicing. So there are all your tips and common mistakes for your ankle grabs. So again, let's really keep practicing those ankle grabs. Now, a little tip I have for you today, especially with our ankle grab, it, at our studio that I usually teach at, we usually take a few weeks just to work on the ankle grab. So it is quite a tricky and tough trick. We're going upside down. Our head is literally facing the floor and our legs are up. In what world and in what daily life do we ever go upside down, right? It's not a normal position for our body to be in. So make sure that you're really kind to yourself while you're learning your ankle grabs. I didn't get my ankle grabs straight away. It took me weeks. It took me days. And it's not a trick where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna get straight away today. And I think that's what's also rewarding about these tricks. And once you jump into this intermediate pole trick tutorial, the tricks are gonna be a little bit harder every time we do it. And I want you to make sure that you're progressively learning things. So remember to be kind to yourself. Remember that this is a progressive journey. You're not gonna get it straight away. And it is totally, totally fine. And remember that if you do have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll always be here to answer all your questions. Thank you so much for joining me in the ankle grab invert or inverted crucifix tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you in the very next tutorial. Bye. Hi. Yes.
but then you gotta... Oh, yeah. Hi, Truffle. Can you not show your butt to the audience? Oh, yo. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, you... Oh, jeez. Here you got it. Found him. Don't look washed out. 